This man drowned in his own swimming pool. He was surrounded by security, but no one noticed. The guards looked toward him thinking he was still swimming, and upon closer inspection there was a man under the water. He was swimming with his buddy in tow. The man's name is Arthur, a highly intelligent killer who specializes in causing accidental deaths. And the man he had just drowned in the pool by a slight trick was his new target. After his successful assassination, he quickly went to the utility room, put on the servant's clothes, and left the scene in style. He arrived at the bridge just as a cargo ship was about to pass. He timed his leap to land just behind the freighter, then grabbed the stern and escaped. Arthur returned home and immediately put on his favorite music. Then he destroyed the information about the mission. It was his habit to eat his breakfast in the morning, while seeing the news post on his computer, Arthur finished his mission and went to his usual place. He found an old roommate, Harry. Harry was also his guide. Harry talked about his unconscious son. Harry pays Arthur for the mission after a quick catch-up. He then went to his usual bar and decided to reward himself. After this was over, he received a new reward as a mechanic. But this time, the target of the mission surprised him. It was actually Harry who had just talked to his son. Arthur frowned slightly. He wondered if the company had made a mistake, so he decided to see the boss himself. The boss said that six months ago, they arranged for five agents to carry out a difficult task. The result of the agents were destroyed. Only the boss and Harry knew the details of the mission. He guessed that Harry had betrayed them, and then the boss listed a list of evidence that Harry betrayed them. Arthur and Harry's special relationship. The boss wanted Arthur to come help and solve the problem cleanly. Arthur still couldn't believe it after hearing it. He was very conflicted, and he contacted Harry after a night of agonizing. Harry was in his office at the time. Arthur told him that the company was going to get rid of him, and then helped Harry escape. The two friends continued to work very well together. Under Arthur's guidance, he cut the power and destroyed the surveillance equipment. He took the elevator to the parking lot with his disabled legs. Then he saw himself, and it turned out that it was all Arthur's plan to let Harry evade security and come to himself. Harry pulled a pistol out of his bag, but he only fired a few shots at his car. He wanted to help Arthur fake the accident scene, and then handed Arthur the pistol that had followed him for years. This is also considered to be the last explanation to his friend. Harry was willing to die at Arthur's hands. Arthur did his job well once again, and with a gunshot, Arthur meets Harry's son Steve in the cemetery. Arthur and Steve come to Harry's house, see the guns on the table, and ask him why there are guns in the house. Steve said he was going to kill some carjackers to avenge his father's death. Poor Steve didn't realize that the man who killed his father was actually the man in front of him. Steve looks unconcerned, but inside he feels very sad and angry about his father's death. Steve deliberately parked his car in the middle of the night in a remote place. By doing so, he managed to get a man to catch him. The man points a gun at Steve's head. Steve pretends to compromise, and then takes the opportunity to beat him bloody. He thinks these are the men who killed his father, and he wants to get back at them. As he was about to shoot, Arthur rushed out and stopped him. Steve finds Arthur afterwards and wants him to teach him to be a capable man. At first Arthur was reluctant, but then Steve mentioned his father. Arthur agrees out of guilt for Harry. Arthur told him the meaning of mechanic on the first day, and found himself belittled by Steve. He then picked out his bad deeds from childhood to shut him up. He then chose a chihuahua dog for Steve to take back and train and feed. Steve would bring the dog to the cafe every morning for the next three weeks. They Saturday in the corner by the window. Arthur also trained Steve to shoot firearms. Steve was making rapid progress in this area, and within a few days, he was hitting the bull's eye with every shot. Arthur planned to take Steve for a practical training session after a while. They went to the merchant's house and pretended to buy weapons. He strangled the merchant from behind when it wasn't looking. He then disguised the scene and hid it cleanly and concisely. Steve admired him a lot. Steve spent the last few days watching him. Arthur gradually began to understand the rules of the mechanic profession. Arthur handed Steve a photo of the target of the mission, a man who was also an assassin and was difficult to approach, but he had a few constant traits. He would drink coffee in the same place every morning and like chihuahuas and young children. Steve was the best person to get to him, which is why he was given these tasks. Arthur had drugs for Steve to kill him in the bar, but Steve was slow to do it. He also wanted to follow Arthur's example and solve the mission quickly and in a stylish way. So Steve went on a wild goose chase. He followed the target to his house in a car, 
and prepared to strangle him with a bell just like Arthur. But then he was thrown off his feet with a shoulder tackle. Steve realized the disparity in their strength and was almost killed by him. In the end, although they barely finished the target, he was also injured. Arthur knew he hadn't done what he wanted. He didn't blame him much. They started to work together from then on. The boss of the company learned it, that Arthur was training Harry's son for the mission and decided to keep a close eye on him. They soon embarked on a new mission. The target of this mission was a cult leader. They sneaked into the cult leader's location. They prepare an overdose of adrenaline and plan to kill him by causing an accident. The operation goes awry and a gun battle ensues. They fought as they retreated and finally met on the roof of the building. Together they managed to escape with a rope. They arrived at the airport and decided to split up here. Arthur was waiting in the waiting room when he saw a familiar face. He found out that it was one of the killers that Harry had betrayed before. Why was he still alive? Arthur realizes that something is wrong and follows him immediately. They met and fought on the bus. Arthur learned that Harry's story was fictional and that the company was behind everything. The boss then sent people to kill Arthur, but he killed them all. Arthur was used by the boss, is very upset inside. Decided to go with Steve to settle accounts with him, Arthur felt that the boss would not let go of Steve. So a phone call to help Steve solve the problem. Steve is worthy of being Arthur's trained assassin, but no need to send. Steve found his father's pistol while arranging his weapons and became suspicious of Arthur. Steve held back his hatred in the car and didn't expose them, then went to the boss's bodyguard's house. They get the boss's location by threatening his wife and daughter. Arthur called the boss and told him that he was downstairs. The boss was informed and immediately asked his bodyguard to escort him away. In fact, Arthur is using the same ploy when killing Harry. When the boss's motorcade came out, Arthur drove straight into it. He got out of the car and took out some of his men with his gun. Steve drove the bus on the other side and crashed directly into it. Steve drove straight into the bus and it exploded. Steve found the boss's car. The boss turned around and tried to run. Arthur drove his truck and collided with the boss. The boss was directly lifted up by him with a fork with a car. The boss was seriously injured by Arthur and Steve's double strafing. On their way back, Arthur found the gun in Steve's arms that belonged to Harry. Arthur knew what Steve wanted to do. Then they went to the gas station. Steve deliberately spilled the oil from the gun and shot the car on the side. Steve did not know that Arthur had left the car in advance and rolled to the side. He managed to avoid the explosion. Steve thinks he's gotten his revenge and goes back to Arthur's house. He triggered Arthur's record player and took Arthur's car. He found a message Arthur left on the passenger side. When you read this message, it means you're dying. He left, then exploded in place and the house burned down. Arthur managed to escape and then disappeared into obscurity. The most important thing for a successful killer is a stable mind. Chance only favors the prepared.